this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'll be working through the toddler hooded fox blanket. I'm using three colors and this is Bernat Softy Chunky. So this is a super bulky weight number six yarn. I'm using pumpkin, dark taupe, and natural. I'll be using a 10 millimeter crochet hook for the majority of the blanket, but we, we will use a smaller hook for some of the details that we're gonna attach to the hood. So I find it helpful to work from the written pattern, but you can also follow along with the chart. Everything is in the pattern and the pattern also includes your child in adult size. So I like just using my chart and I use a highlighter just to mark off as I go. You can put a piece of paper just under each row just so you can keep track and then I just highlight it off as I work through the rows. So I like to take the center of the ball. It will be a little messy to start with but it will be easier to work from the centers as we go along. So the first two rows of the blanket, there'll be no color changes. And again, we're working on the toddler size. So I'll begin by chaining out 57. Make sure that your chain is not too tight. We're, we'll be working this blanket in extended single crochet and it does tend to be a wide stitch. So if your chain is too tight, the top, the top of your blanket will cinch in instead of working out to the width of the stitches. So let's chain out 57. Okay, so once you've chained out a total of 57, we'll be working single crochets across our chain. Now what I'd like you to do is turn your chain so that you can see those back humps and we'll be working into them rather than this back loop of the chain. So turn your work, work a single uh, extended single crochet in the back humps. So to do an extended single crochet, we're going through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over again, pulling through two. yarn over. So instead of going through both loops like you would a regular single crochet, we're just going through one loop, yarn over, and pull through two. So this makes our stitch closer to the height of a half double crochet. Using the 10 millimeter hook gives us a nice loose stitch. Make the blanket nice and cozy. Now an alternative for this blanket is if you don't use the super bulky yarn, you could use two strands held together of worsted weight yarn. When you're looking at the pattern, if you choose to do that, just double the yardage required because you're essentially doubling up, so double the yardage. So I'm gonna continue working across in extended single crochets all the way across my chain. So you should have a total of 56 stitches when you complete it. So I've worked across 56. You wanna just check out your chain, going back across your chain now, just to make sure that you didn't do your chain too tight. You wanna make sure that it stretches out to the width of the stitches, or you won't quite have enough width for your blanket. So. The blanket should be about 35 inches wide. And with our edging, it will end up being around the 36 inch mark for a toddler. So now we'll chain one in turn. And we're gonna do the same thing for row two. We'll work one extended single crochet in every stitch across. For a total of 56 stitches. I keep my stitches nice and loose when I'm working this. Okay, like I say, I, want, I don't want the blanket with a really tight stitch. We want it nice and loose and cuddly and cozy. So I'm going to continue working that across and then I'll meet you up at the next row. 
Okay, so I've completed that row. I'm gonna chain one and turn to get set up now for row three. Row three will be the first row that will start into some color changes. So what we'll do is we'll work 23 in our main color, which is pumpkin, and then we'll be bringing in color A, which is our brown color, the dark taupe. So I'll go ahead and work across my 23 stitches and then I'll meet you. So I've worked to 22. So on our 23rd stitch is when we'll bring in color A. So we'll go through, pull up a loop, yarn over, and then when we pull through the final two stitches, we'll pull through with color A. And what we wanna do is drop off the main color. I'm gonna go across now my 10 stitches. I'm just gonna crochet over the tail just to help out with weaving. So there's two, three, Okay, so I've worked nine stitches. So the reason that I dropped off the main color is because rather than carrying it, I think the work looks a lot nicer if we just, we're gonna go be going through a lot of balls. So there's no reason why we wanna carry that across. We might as well just work this ball on this side and the, another ball on this side of the work. Now working with three different balls at one time, things can get a little messy, so you just wanna make sure when you're turning your work, you're keeping everything straight and organized. So we've worked across nine, we need to do one more stitch in brown. So we pull through once, and then again, we're gonna drop off our brown, color A, and we're bringing in the main color. Another option for the main color is the is this taupe color. You could always, if you like some of my photos that have more of the brown look, you can do your fox in that color instead of the orange. So that's another option as well. So now I'm going to crochet over this tail as I go. Okay, so I have my nine stitches. So now we will complete the 10th, going, pulling through only once, dropping that off, and now we'll bring in the main color and pull through. So then we'll continue working with the main color. And I'm just crocheting over that tail as well, just to kind of help with weaving. Okay, so now just as you go, when you're turning, you just wanna make sure not to tangle up all of your balls. You can always turn over and then go back, going back and forth the same way. But once we get to that point, I'll go over that more with you. For now, just work at, working all the way across, you should have 23 stitches on this side so that the blanket matches up. Okay, so I turned my work and I've just readjusted my balls so I'm not getting twisted up. So this time we're going to be working across 23 stitches again and then we'll be working 10 in our color A, which is our brown. So I've chained one, we'll work an extended single crochet in every stitch across for 23 stitches. So I'll work across 22 and then I'll meet you up. So I've worked 22 and now we're getting to the 23rd stitch. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tail and I'm gonna keep it to the wrong side of my work. Anything 
that looks a little messy, tails and whatnot, we want to keep all the strands to the wrong side of the work and then it's going to keep our front really neat. So that's pulled over. Now we'll yarn over and we'll work across 10. And remember that the entire blanket's worked in these extended single crochets. So those are the stitches that I'm always working. I'm just grabbing that little tail and crocheting it over as I go. Okay, so we're coming to the last stitch and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull my yarn to this side of my work and then I will yarn over with the main color and continue working. Okay, so now make sure to count. You can always add stitch markers to the first and last stitches of your rows. If you're struggling to keep your stitch count on track for beginners, that can sometimes be helpful so you know what stitch you're finishing in. But you should have 23. So I'll work across my 23 and then I'll meet you up again. So now I've gotten to the end of my row, I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to move my yarn to get everything into position for my next row. I like to keep everything straight and organized as I work and then make sure again to keep tracking your work as you're going. So now we're on to row five. So we're back to the right side of our work and I'm going to be doing 22 in the main color and 12 and then 22 in the main color. So I will work across a total of 21 and then I'll meet you up on the 22nd stitch. Okay, I've worked across 22 stitches. Let me pull that back. So 21 stitches. So we're changing color on the next stitch. So I just pulled that back. So this is my 22nd stitch. We'll go through, pull up a loop, keeping this to the back now because we're on the right side. Pull through. Then what I do, because I'm pulling this across, I'm just going to crochet over that pull as I go. I've got my bit of a mess from pulling the center pull, but once I get through that, it just makes it easier working through the centers. So we'll just work quickly across here. This time we'll have 12 in color A. Once you get the hang of changing color, it's really easy. Okay, so now we're going into the main color. You can pull that and always crochet over that too. So it's a nice clean transition. So pull through one, drop that off to the back and pull through. So row one, every time we're on an odd row, it we are on the right side. A tip that I've usually given my videos is if you are struggling to remember, you can always just add a stitch marker. So you can just stick that in there and you know this is the right side. So every time we're on the right side, we're keeping that yarn all to the back. 
whenever we're on the wrong side, we're having to pull it forward. And it's just gonna make your color changes just really nice. No mess in the front. So now this section is gonna just be repetitive. I've worked through that with you. So now I'm gonna let you work through that on your own. The tail will slightly be increasing, but you can go get the PDF and it will give you the directions. And this applies to all the sizes. So follow along with the size that you wanna make. But I'm gonna leave it now until we get to row 23 where we will be doing multiple color changes so we'll be bringing in color b at that point so we're going to have lots going on so i'm going to meet you up for row 23 and i can work through row 23 row 24 with you just so that you are good to go for that section but otherwise i'm going to work up the rest off camera and I will meet you back up for those rows. Okay, so we've worked all the way up to row 23. And so for row 23, we're working across 18 stitches in the main color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we'll get into all of those color changes that are gonna go across the tail. Okay, so I'm coming across. We're gonna change over and we're on the right side so our yarn is staying to the back and now for color a we're working two and then we're changing to b so one two and now we need to bring color b in and this is where i will crochet over my tails because we're going to be working back and forth with forth with a and or b a and B. Okay, so let's pull through. And there's only one stitch of B. So we're right back. Okay, and now we're going to carry along our color B. So we need to do four and A, one, two, three, four, and then we're changing and we're only doing one in B. So you just pull through once then we're just bringing back up A. Again, we're doing four, one, two, and a snag. One, two, three, four, and then back again to B for one stitch. And then back again to A for four, one, two, three, four, and then we're changing back again to B. And then back again to A. And at this point, we can just leave A there or B there and then continue with A. Okay, and then we're going back to the main color. And working across. Okay, so now I know this is gonna get, a, it's a little messier. 
So we have, we're working now with four balls, but it's gonna go quickly. We have another row that's gonna have a lot of color changes, and then we'll be working the main color and just B. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll work across my 18 stitches and then back with the 18 stitches and then we'll meet up just for that color change row one more time. Okay, so I've worked across. Now we gotta remember we're on the wrong side so we wanna keep our balls coming now to the wrong side of our work. So we'll yarn over with A. And let me just double check the chart. So we're doing one in A and three in B this time. Okay, so we're only gonna pull through once. Let's bring the yarn this way. Yarn over and now because I've pulled this, I want to go over that or under it when I make that stitch. So we're doing three in B. And then we're going to do two in A. So again, we need to bring it to this side. One, two, and then we're doing three, one, two. And this is just a repetitive pattern across, okay? Pull that through, two and A, three and B. We're finishing off with one in A, and then we're back to the main color. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a look at my chart again. Take a look at it. I am now working with main color and color B. So at this point, I can fasten off with color A. And then that tail, you can weave into your work so that you don't see it. And so now what I'll do is I'll continue working across 18 and back 18, and then I'll just work through the next row with you as well. Okay, so I've worked across 18 stitches, and now I am gonna change over to color B. And when I go through that stitch, I'm gonna make sure I catch that loop because I've pulled it across. And now we're just working across, dropped off my main color, and I'm working across here in color B. So now the top part of the tail is gonna be in our cream color. So what we're gonna do for the next three rows is we'll work those 20 stitches in the cream, and then we're gonna slowly start decreasing the cream section for the tip of our tail. when we don't have when we're not carrying the main color yarn it's nice because we won't see any of that orange peeking through and it works out nicely because it's a big project we'll we'll work through enough balls that it doesn't really affect 
affect us too much. So then when we get to the end, we're just now switching back to the main color. Dropping off color B and working across. Okay, so our foxtail is really starting to take shape now. It's looking really good. So what I'm going to do is I have now, I still have rows 26 through 40 to complete. The last row 36 will complete the top of the tail and then I'll have an additional four rows above the tip of the tail. And that's where we can add if we want a little bit extra length, it's easy to add on more rows just to make the blanket a little bit longer. I'll measure up and if for some reason my gauge has gone off, haven't quite got the length that I want, I can just add a few more rows of the main color and it's all good. So I'm gonna continue to work this now off camera and I'll meet you back up when I've completed the blanket portion. So for the hood, we're gonna need some of our main color and also some of color B. So we're gonna be using the pumpkin and natural. So for the toddler size hood, we're gonna begin with a chain of seven. And I'm using again the 10 millimeter crochet hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll work an extended single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And in each chain across. Okay, so I've worked across and in the last chain, we're gonna add two. So now we'll turn and we're gonna work on the opposite side of the chain. So that is this side of the chain now. And in that first chain, we'll wanna add two because whatever we do on one side, we wanna do on the other side, so it's even. And then working extended single crochets down the side. And you should have five. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> So now in total, you should have 14 stitches. Next, we'll chain one and turn. Okay, because our hood is gonna look like a rainbow, going back and forth like this, so we don't join anything down here. This tail can be woven in afterwards. So what we're gonna do for row two, our chain one is not included on a as a stitch, so I'll make sure I mention that. And now we'll work one extended single crochet in each of the next five stitches. Then we'll work two extended single crochet in each of the next four stitches. So we do two in each of the next four. And finishing off with an extended single crochet in the last five stitches. So now we have increased eight up to 18 stitches in total. So row three will chain one and turn and for row three we'll work one extended single crochet in each of the next six. So one, 
to three, four, five, six, and then in each of the next six stitches, we'll do two. Okay, and then working down now the final stitches, you should have six more. So just complete extended single crochets now across. So you should now have 24 stitches. We'll chain one and turn. And the next row, we're just working one extended single crochet in every stitch across. So I'll just go ahead and complete that and then I'll meet you back up for the final increase row. Chain one and turn. And now for row five, we're gonna work an extended single crochet in each of the next eight stitches. Okay, I've worked across eight and then in the next eight stitches, we're adding two in every stitch. So I'll complete that off camera too. So you're just adding two. Okay, across eight stitches. Okay, and then you should have eight stitches remaining and you just work one extended single crochet in each of the remaining eight stitches. Okay, so we've now completed five rows. The increasing is done. I am just gonna mark that fifth row. It just helps me to keep track as my, of my rows as I go. So I wanna do a total of 12 rows in the main color of pumpkin. So I have to work a few more rows now off camera, but we're at a total of 32 stitches. So you're just working back and forth at this point. There's no more increasing. You want to work up until you have a total of 13 and then we're going to change over to the cream and finish out three more rows with our cream color. So I'm going to go ahead and work my rows here off camera and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I've worked up my 12 rows. So now all I'm going to do to change color is pull in my natural on that last stitch. chain one and turn and then I'm just going to continue working the next three rows in our cream Okay, so I'm just going to keep working and complete the next three rows in our cream. Now, normally when I fasten off, I, I use a long tail to sew the hood to the blanket. But in this case, I'm going to want to have the orange yarn sew to the hood. So you don't need to fasten off as long. You can just take your end here and get it woven in. Now what I'm gonna show you how to do next is the ear. Okay, so the ear is gonna go on the hood like this. I've already made one, so you'll be making two ears and you'll need three colors to complete the ear. So I'm gonna begin with the back of the ear. So let's make a slip knot and put that on our hook. I'm using the 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. and I will chain two. Now we'll work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. I'll chain one and turn, and then we'll work two single crochet into that stitch. Chain one and turn. Now I'll work two single crochet in the first stitch. Then I'll work two single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one and turn. 
For this row, we'll now just work one single crochet into every stitch across. Chain one and turn, and then we'll work two in the first. Work one in each of the next two and then two single crochet in the last stitch. Now we will chain one and turn and work one in every stitch across. Okay, so we're gonna do another increase. Chain one and turn. So we'll put two in the first. Then we'll work a single crochet in every stitch across and add two in the last. One, two, three, four, and then two in the last. So now we've increased up to eight stitches. I'm gonna chain one and turn. We're gonna work a single crochet across. Okay, and then in the last stitch, I'm gonna actually change color. So I'm gonna pull that back and I'm gonna pull in my black. I want the edging of the ear to be done in the black. So I'm gonna change color. So instead of pulling through with our main color, I'm gonna bring in black, which is color C, and pull through. So now we're gonna work up the side. So I'm gonna add an extra stitch right there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then in the top here, You'll have, see this big hole. We're gonna add three for the tip of the ear. One, two, three. And then if you just tug your tail, it's gonna pull that in. And then I'm gonna crochet it over as I work down. Now I know I worked a total of seven up the side. So I wanna do the same thing working down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then an additional stitch in that corner stitch here so that we're equaling both sides and then I'll just slip stitch in our first stitch of row eight to join. Okay and then we can fasten that off and I like to leave a long tail. I'm going to use the orange the main color yarn to sew the ear to the hood so I'll make sure I leave a long tail for that. So any additional tails, you can weave them in. So this tail, this tail, this tail, just leave the long one for sewing. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the inner ear. So now to do the inside piece. It's made very similar, but it's gonna be a little bit smaller. So we're gonna start out by chaining two. One single crochet in the second chain from the hook, chain one turn and work two single crochet into that stitch. Chain one and turn. 
Now what we're going to do is instead of doubling up our increases, we'll just do one increase at a time. So we'll work two in the first and only one in the next. So we have three stitches, chain one and turn. We'll work two in the first and then just one in the next two. So now we have four stitches. We'll chain one and turn, work a two in the first, and then work one in each of the next three stitches. So now we have five stitches, chain one and turn, work two in the first, one, two, three, Four. So now we have six stitches, chain one and turn, and work one in every stitch across. For a total of six stitches. And now we will edge this piece as well, similar to the, out the outer piece, but we're just doing it all in the cream. So what you can do is add that additional stitch and then working up the side, I'm gonna add another one here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then up in this top piece, we'll do three, one, two, three. Again, you can pull the tail and then crochet over this tail as we go down. Remember that we need six stitches as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then in the corner, we'll add that extra stitch and slip stitch into the first single crochet of row seven. Fasten off and we'll want a long tail for sewing this to the ear piece. Okay, so now we just need to get rid of, we just have the one tail and I've already crocheted over it in one way. So let's just do a quick thread in this direction. Now for sewing them together, I'm gonna go ahead and use, it's still a yarn needle for, for bulky yarn, but it's just a little bit, it's gonna be a little bit more fine to get in than that big other bigger needle. So this is our tail for sewing to the hood. Now we'll use our yarn here. It'll just be a little harder to get the bulky yarn through. So now what we'll do is sew. So this is the right side of the ear. I like that you can see the V stitches, so the nice detailed V stitches. I know this is black, so it's hard to see, but you'll notice on your right, always on your right side, you're gonna have a nicer edge than this side. Okay, so this side looks much cleaner. So this is the side we sides we want facing out if we're looking at the fox. So right side of the outer ear piece to the wrong side, putting the wrong side to the right side. That makes sense. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is take piece of the orange, the main color section, and now we're only gonna go through the one loop, okay? So we're gonna see more of this nice clean loop here, and we'll take the back loop there to pull that through. So as we work around the ear, we're just taking a bit, putting our hook through that main color yarn 
and then pushing it up through the back loop only. You really want to hide this underneath because we don't want to see that on the side of the ear. So we're just wanting to kind of hide these stitches that we're making. So we basically just now do this all the way around. You can see how nice that looks. So your ear is going to look nice and clean. You don't want it looking messy. So I'm going to continue working around that and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so as I've come to the end, what I like to do to give our ear just a little bit of shape, I mean, if you like it like that, that's fine. <clears throat> I'm just going to sew through Just do a little weaving and kind of pull that the ear has a little bit of pinch to it and it also gives it a bit more of a base for sitting onto the hood and helps your ear to stand up better. You want it to position it on the hood so that I'm going to go through a bit of the orange too just to secure it. Make sure that you kind of position it on top of the hood here that the ears do stand up well. So we're just wanting to weave to make sure that this tail is well secured and then that completes your ear. And make sure obviously that you make two ears. So now to sew on the ears, I've just taken my yarn bowl and put it upside down. It's kind of good to just use something you think just to kind of see how it's going to sit or if you have a head to try it on just how the hood overall is going to sit then what you want to do is put your ears up on the hood and like I said before it's going to be able to sit because we've done that section here it's going to be able to sit and the ears will stand up So you know this is up to the back of the hood here. So we want our ear to kind of sit on the hood like this. And the other important thing is just making sure we get them on there even. So once you kind of know where you need them to sit, You want to make sure that we test both of them on and kind of see the stitches. So this row here, I'm going to sew the outer ear piece. So then I know when I go to sew this one, that part of the ear needs to go to that row. Or maybe we'll start it down to the start of this one. I always suggest don't weave in any tails until after you've sewn everything on and make sure that it the ears are positioned evenly and that they're in the right spot. So I know I'm coming down here so I like to get that piece started right away. Because once we're in there and we've got our edge done, we know we're in the right position to start working around the hood. So I just like holding my ear and then going through part of the hood as well as part of the ear. So it's good to kind of keep checking that it's looking right from the front 
as well as the back. And you just work all the way around that ear. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that one now here and I'm gonna start sewing on the other ear just to make sure that I get it sewn on in the right spot as well. To go down here like that. Okay, so I am happy with these placements. I'm just going to go through now the front as well, making sure we have the front of the ear sewn to the hood. Okay, and then just make sure you do the other side as well. At this point, I'm still even gonna leave my tails just in case I have to make any changes. Okay, but I am liking how the ears are looking and they're really nice and secure when we hold the hood up. Okay, so now to make the snout, we're gonna use our cream colored yarn and make a magic ring. Push your hook through, grabbing the first loop and pull it through. Now we'll chain two and we'll work six half double crochet into the ring. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now what we wanna do is push the work out of the way because we wanna pull our ring tight start pulling that in. You can see this loops pulled. So now we'll take it and that will pull our other loop. Now what we'll do is slip stitch in the top of the first half double crochet to join and then we will chain two. Now we're going to work two half double crochet into every stitch around. So we'll slip stitch to join. Once we've worked two in every stitch around, you should have a total of 12 stitches. And then we'll fasten off with a tail. We wanna use that tail to sew the snout to the hood. This tail here can get woven in. So now to make the nose, we're just gonna use a yarn needle with our color CR black yarn. And we're just going to weave the yarn to make the nose. So I'm gonna have my tail at the bottom.
Then you can just take your tails and knot them to the back of our work here. And then that can just get trimmed. And if you want a seamless join, you can not do a slip stitch. You can just take your tail on your yarn needle, weave it through the first stitch of the round, and then come back down through the back loop only of the last stitch. And that will just make a little faux stitch. And then what we'll end up doing is sewing this to the hood. But we have a face marking that we're gonna make next. So I'm gonna show you that before we sew everything together. Okay, so to do the face marking, we're using our smaller hook, the 6.5 millimeter. Put that on the hook and we'll chain three. One single crochet in the second chain from hook and the next chain. So we have two stitches. Chain one and turn. We'll work one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Chain one and turn. And up to row five, we're just gonna be crocheting two stitches. So there's two, row three, row four, and row five. Chain one and turn. So row six will work two and two. So we've increased to four stitches. Got a little knot. Chain one and turn. Now for row seven, we'll work two in the first stitch. one single crochet in the next two, and then two in the next. So now we have six stitches. Chain one and turn. We'll work two in the first, work across to the last stitch, adding two in the last stitch. Chain one and turn. Add two to the first stitch. Then we'll work across to the last stitch, adding two in the last stitch. Okay, and I'll get you to continue in this manner until we've worked up to a total of 18 stitches. Okay, so as you're working these rows, you can kind of judge by how many you need to do based on the hood. So I've gone up to about 16 stitches and I would say that that is enough because what we're wanting to do is have our snout right here and then this portion is gonna come down and then go up to the ears. So I think that 16 stitches is good for the toddler size, but this is an easy way you can just double check on your hood to see where you need to stop. So once you've worked it long enough, I'm gonna leave a really long tail for sewing it. I'm gonna make sure I get rid of this tail and you can add some scrap yarn or a little bit of stuffing to this snout just to get it to stick up a little bit more before you sew it on. So now when you're sewing this on, you wanna make sure that you're not interfering with this stitch because we still have to edge the blanket and the hood. So we need to work into those stitches. 
So what you're doing is grabbing a little bit of the hood and going through the back loop only of that stitch to sew it in place. Make sure it's centered on the hood and then you're just going through each stitch around to sew this right onto the hood. Okay, so I'm gonna work that around off camera and then I'll meet you up for our face marking. So now when we're sewing on the face marking, we're gonna line up our narrowest part with our nose. And I want you to take a look at the stitch. I want you to use the row that you finished off on facing up. So it doesn't matter how many rows you do, I just want that final edge nice and clean. So we're gonna get this all in place. This is coming down right onto the nose. This is going to fit right up under those ears. So make sure it's all in place. We're gonna get the yarn needle onto our yarn and then start sewing the face piece. You're just gonna go through the hood really make sure you hold it in place that you're sewing it on that it is even you're just going under grabbing a little piece of the hood and then sewing through the face marking you may need to pick it up and just kind of look where you're going. And you're wanting to press that right down so it lines up here with the nose. So just keep sewing, go right down, sew it right to that black section. Keep going all the way around and then I'll meet you up once I've completed that. Okay, I've worked all the way around. I've really tried to get them evenly sewn also to the same part of the ear. And then once you finish, you can just weave in your tail. As long as you're happy, again, with the placement, if you notice that you kind of got off track when you were sewing it, just pull it back and try again. It's worth redoing to make sure it looks good. And I still had to weave in my ears as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so the final step here with the hood is attaching the eyes. So I have these little buttons that I'm just gonna use. You could always make eyes if you want, but I think the buttons are a really nice touch. And I'm just using some worsted weight yarn and a finer needle to attach them. So just whatever you have in your scrap or thread it's just the holes on the buttons are going to be too small to get that bulky yarn through. So you just need some scrap bits for sewing on. And all you need to do is just knot on the button. Okay, and then just add on your other button as well. Okay, so my blanket here is finished and I ended with, I had four rows to do after my color work pattern ended. And so I'm ending over here, ending off on my wrong side so that when I come back to do the edging, I'll be on the right side. But what we wanna do is get the hood attached first. So I've already marked out, you just wanna center your hood go here through the center of the stitch up the center of the back of the hood 
and then just sort of lay it out giving it a little stretch and now I counted over my stitches on each side so that they were equal you can use a measuring tape or count your stitches whatever you find easiest and then I just marked them so I have them marked here on both sides where I want to sew the hood so then you want to take your hood and just place it so this is the right side of my blanket we're going to put the back of the hood against it and I'm going to get some yarn to sew. I'm going to use the main color, so I'm going to use the orange yarn to sew the hood to the blanket. Okay, so just use your yarn needle for, for bulky yarn. And we're going into the stitch right next to our mark stitch here. What I'm going to do is just knot this on. And then just hold the hood and the blanket together and we're just gonna go through the stitch of the blanket. Whoops. And going through the hood. So now you just wanna make sure that you're sewing it on even so that it's going right over to your next marker. Okay, and I'm just going to continue working that across. Once I've completed that, I'm just going to weave my tails. Okay, so I completed that. So now I'll just remove all of my markers done with them and also my marker that was down here to mark the right side of the blanket I'll remove it now as well too okay so then what you can do is come back to your corner I've just left the ball attached I've left the working yarn here so I can easily join back on. I'll chain one and turn. And now we'll work across. We'll actually be working across single crochets for our edging. So I'm working across in single crochets, but now you wanna get ready to bring in the cream yarn. We're gonna edge the hood section in the cream. So we will be changing colors. Okay, so we'll yarn over with the cream on that last stitch. I want to crochet over this tail as I go as well. So then each stitch of the hood will be working through now a single crochet. And I need to fasten this off so that I can pick that orange yarn, the main color back up on the other side of the hood. And this is where it was important when you were sewing on the snout that you left room that we could get through into these stitches.
get right to the last stitch of the hood and then we'll yarn over with main color and just crochet over that tail as you go and then this tail this can get cut and you'll need to weave in that tail So I'll keep working across, I'll meet you at the corner. So in our last stitch here, we can add three and that just gets us turned around that corner and then we're gonna be working down the side of the blanket. Now, I think what we're gonna find is what we need to do is work about three single crochet for every two rows. So the row that has sort of a bigger loop, I'm going to add two into that. And then I'm going to do one. So two. And one. Two. And one in the next space. And that should get your edging looking pretty even. If this is looking too bunchy or too pulled, you may need to alter the stitches to get it to smooth out. If you're finding it looks bunchy, even trying to tighten up the stitch might help that too. And I'm gonna try and keep my stitch fairly tight because mine does look a little bit loose. So I'm gonna try to keep my stitches. Um, I'm just gonna pay close attention to make those stitches tight as I go. So at every corner, make sure to add the three stitches and then you're just working all the way back up to where we started at this corner and then you can slip stitch to join and fasten off. Because the paws for the fox are in black, I'm gonna show you using a lighter color yarn so that it's easier to see. So to crochet the paws, we'll make a magic ring, push the hook through, Grabbing your first loop, pull that through and chain one. Now we'll work a total of eight single crochet in the ring. Okay, now to pull the ring tight, we're gonna push work so that it's out of the way take your tail start pulling it you'll notice one pulls in and the others popped up so just take the loop that's pulled in give it a tug and now we'll slip stitch to join chain one and work two single crochet into every stitch around So I'll complete that, whoops. So I'll complete working two single crochet in every stitch around and I'll do that off camera and meet you up. So you should have a total of 16 stitches and now we'll slip stitch to join, chain one and work one single crochet into every stitch around. So you'll work one stitch around for a total of 16 stitches. I'll slip stitch to join. So that's a total now of three rounds. I want you to just continue working it for a total of eight rounds. So eight rounds in total at 16 stitches and then we'll meet up again. Okay, so if you count the rounds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're gonna do a decrease round. So we'll work one single crochet into the first stitch. So we've already chained one. So one single crochet, and then we'll do a decrease. So go through the stitch, pull up a loop, go right into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. One single crochet in the next, and then we'll do a decrease. One single crochet in the next, 
and a decrease and repeat that all the way around. So now I've slip stitched to join and we'll just work a single crochet in every stitch around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11 stitches slip stitch to join chain one and we're going to do that one more time so basically we're making a little mitten shape and then we can add the pads to the bottom of this once we get this complete okay and then when we've completed that you can slip stitch to join and fasten off with a tail for sewing to the blanket Now for the fox blanket, you could add, because the, the paw is in the black, you could add your pads in the cream for them to stand out depending on, and if you've done the taupe colored blanket, you could add taupe instead. But if you've done the orange, I would suggest maybe going with the cream for your little paw pads. So the pads are really simple to make. We're just going to make a magic ring. Grab the first, chain one, and we're gonna work five single crochet in the ring. We'll pull the ring tight. So take your tail. And slip stitch to join and then all you're gonna do is fasten that off so you want to make five little pads that we can add to our mitten okay so I sewed all of my little paw pads to the mitten so I just put one here and then just sew the other one sort of around and then what you can do is sew this to the blanket now you want to make sure that your tail is on the side before you sew on the paw pads and then to sew it to the blanket what you want to do is just line up the mitten to the edge of the blanket like this i like to have that this goes to the back and that the paw pads are going to the inside of the blanket so I just line up my stitches and you can just sew that right to the blanket. Just make sure that your mitten is, you don't sew it close so that they can fit their little hands in. And you can just weave in your tail to secure that. Mm -hmm. 